Command Sound Adjutant's Call is used by the United States Army to indicate that the commanding general, the officer responsible for accounting for soldiers and forming the unit, is about to form the command. It was first used by the Army in 1874. It advises subordinate commanders to prepare their troops for formation and follow on commands. Once all units are at attention, the adjutant will face about, which signals the commander of troops that the command is formed and ready to be presented. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the invocation by Chaplain Blair Davis. Let us pray. Father and Lord, I beseech you today in the only way your word says is possible, through faith in the person and work of Christ. I beseech you today to hear from heaven. I come as a fellow pilgrim and Georgia State Chaplain to pray to, for two of our top leaders, Major General Randall Simmons, outgoing CG of the Georgia Army National Guard, and for the incoming CG, Brigadier General Richard Dwayne Wilson. Like many others gathered here today, I have worked with and for both men for many years. I have seen them grow and develop as they have led day in and out through times of difficulty and triumph. Leadership entails great responsibilities. It demands being ready during the good and bad seasons in life. Decisions must be made that impact not only soldiers, but families, friends, employers, and communities. And so, Lord, may you create what Scripture calls a heart of wisdom. May they seek your face, and may you reward their labor. Lord, for them and their families, may you direct their steps. May you renew their strength and encourage these men to mount up with wings like eagles and run the daily race without growing weary. We thank you, Father, that General Simmons has prepared our ranks well for this day and our state will continue to excel during the decisions he has made during his time of service. He departs to assume new duties and responsibilities, Father. We pray that you will give him wisdom and bless him with tremendous success in the days ahead. And for General Wilson, Lord, may he continue to uphold and improve the standards of our organization. Give him a clear and concise vision as he assumes his new responsibilities. May he and his family seek your face and be rewarded as they lead and serve the men and women in our organization in the days ahead. Lord, guide General Wilson in humble leadership. Guard him and others, other leaders, as they guide us. We thank you, Lord, for our nation and these leaders and their families. May you find us all faithful. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. children, Miss Callie Simmons and Mr. Luke Simmons. For your General Wilson's family, his wife, Mrs. Samantha Wilson, their son, Cadet Noah Wilson, and their daughter, Sarah Grace Wilson. 
and to acknowledge our distinguished military leaders and civilian guests attending today. From the Georgia State Senate, the Honorable Kay Kirkpatrick. From the Georgia State House of Representatives, the Honorable Josh Bonner. Seventy eighth Troop Command, two oh first Regional Support Group, seventy eighth Aviation Troop Command, six forty eighth Maneuver Enhancement Brigade. At this time, Staff Sergeant Lauren Garrison is presenting the outgoing commander's spouse, Mrs. Yet of Simmons, with a bouquet of red roses on behalf of her husband. Staff Sergeant Lauren Garrison is also presenting Major General Simmons' daughter, Callie Simmons, with a bouquet of flowers. Sergeant Samuel Garcia is also presenting Major General Simmons' son, Luke Simmons, a token of his gratitude. <laughs> At this time, Sergeant First Class Bobby Carver is presenting the incoming commander spouse, Mrs. Samantha Wilson, with a bouquet of yellow rosebuds on behalf of her husband. Sergeant First Class Bobby Carver will also present Brigadier General Wilson's daughter, Sarah Grace Wilson, with a bouquet of flowers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the Commander of Troops who will now prepare the formation for the official rendering of honors. At this time, please stand for the rendering of honors. Major General Cardin has deferred honors to Major General Simmons.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Traditionally, the inspection of, of the troops would follow the salute battery. However, this portion has been omitted. The commander of troops will now prepare the colors for the rendering of honors to our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honors to the nation with the singing of the national anthem by First Sergeant Olivia Singleton. Oh, see, can you see by the dawn's early light what so Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red the bombs bursting. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Yesterday evening, the outgoing commanding general, Major General Randall V. Simmons, Jr., was honored for his time and service as the commander of the Georgia Army National Guard during the Hail and Farewell. There, he received the Oglethorpe Distinguished Service Medal. Sir, on behalf of all the Georgia Army National Guard, on behalf of, all, of the Georgia Army National Guard, thank you for your leadership, your unwavering commitment to the soldiers and their families. And we wish you the very best on your next assignment as the Joint Task Force North Commander. At this time, the State Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Jeff Logan, will retrieve the guide on and prepare for the passing of the colors. By authority of the State of Georgia Executive Order by the Governor, it is hereby ordered that effective October 9, 2020, Brigadier General Richard Wilson of Cherokee County, Georgia, is hereby appointed to serve as Commanding General of the Georgia Army National Guard. The act of passing the colors, also known as the Godon, is symbolic of the passing of command authority. It is one of the oldest traditions of the profession of arms. The history of the non-commissioned officers corps as the guardian of the unit colors is acknowledged by Command Sergeant Major Logan's presentation of the colors to Major General Simmons, the outgoing commander. Major General Simmons will then present the colors to Major General Cardin. This symbolizes the, rel the relinquishment of his command. Major General Cardin will then present the colors to Brigadier General Wilson, the incoming commander, thereby passing the responsibility and authority of command to him. Brigadier General Wilson then passes the colors back to the guardianship of the State Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Logan.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Adjutant General of the State of Georgia, Major General Thomas M. Carter, Jr. Well, good morning, everyone. Previously recognized distinguished guests, community leaders, partners, soldiers, airmen, and especially the families of Major General Simmons and Brigadier General Wilson. Thank you all for joining us today. Many are joining us online, and that means a lot to us as well. For example, I know that Major General Joe Girard and Miss Susan are joining us remotely all the way from Germany. Much of what you will see here today and what you've already seen is a result of Major General Girard's leadership and mentoring across our organization, and we're certainly glad that he and Miss Susan, you, and so many others could join us for this great celebration of success today. I want to thank the 116th Army Band, Chaplain Davis and First Sergeant Singleton for sharing their talent and their passion with us today to make this ceremony so special. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> also, I want to give a special thanks to Colonel Craig McPike and our teammates from the 94th Airlift Wing for allowing us to use this facility for the ceremony today. We're truly blessed to have such great partners here on Dobbins. As you all know, COVID-19 has made it difficult for us to do so many things that mean a lot in our warrior culture. From day one of our service, we've literally been programmed to stand shoulder to shoulder. In order to keep everyone safe, we've had to make some adjustments, but we'll not allow this pandemic or anything else to rob us of, of our culture. Today, we're physically distant, but we're everything but socially distant. We'll protect you, and we'll protect the profession of arms as we do this ceremony. Today's ceremony is bittersweet, and it rests on some very basic pillars. Today we celebrate success. Major General Simmons is commanded at every level. We are what our results say we are. Not only did he command, but he delivered exceptional results, from battery command to squadron command to brigade command all the way to the Commanding General of the Georgia Army National Guard. Major General Randall Simmons has led with distinction. He's not only a great warrior, but he's a great friend. Whether in combat or here at home, he set the standard. While we've been very active domestically in the last few months, that's not our primary mission. Our primary mission is to be the primary combat reserve of the United States Army. Major General Simmons understands that, and he has positioned the Georgia Army National Guard to stand and deliver around the globe. The Department of Defense divides our globe into six geographic combatant commands. The Georgia Army National Guard is providing support in all six of those commands at this very moment. We're globally engaged like we've never been before. In addition to those primary missions, Major General Simmons led our Joint Task Force response to the global pandemic and civil unrest. The outstanding results speak for themselves. His emphasis on building combat-ready units from individual fitness to high-end collective training units has set us up for success under any condition from combat to the pandemic. His career has been punctuated by the hard jobs. Those assignments lead me to the underpinnings of service and that is sacrifice. Today we celebrate the family. Both, both Major General Simmons and Brigadier General Wilson and everyone who's worn the nation's uniform knows that our families enable our service. We can rarely leave this installation in uniform without some stranger coming up to us and thanking us for our service. But our families don't get those random thank yous. So let's take a moment this morning and give these families a round of applause for what they do for us every day. Today we celebrate partnerships. Major General Simmons has played a key role in building partnerships in our community. Interagency, public and private partnerships enable our service. I'll just give you a couple of examples. As I look out across the audience, I see Dr. Jacobs and the team from the University of North Georgia that turns out over 70% of the lieutenants in the Georgia Army National Guard. I see General Caldwell, the president of Georgia Military College, who also turns out 
countless leaders that serve in our formation, both commissioned and enlisted. I look at our Georgia National Guard Family Support Foundation members. I see Nancy Couch and Leslie Hammond, Harriet Morgan, and so many others that, that really give of their time and their talent in ways that I don't even have words to explain, but those partnerships have to be enabled. So General Simmons, in his spare time, served as the president of the Georgia National Guard Family Support Foundation. And this foundation does so much for our service members and their families, and that's just a small window into the heart of a servant that is Major General Randall Simmons. So today we acknowledge future potential. The warrior culture celebrates the long list of accomplishments that Major General Simmons has led. At the same time, we keep a keen eye on the future. Nobody really cares where you've been. They're really more interested in where you're going and what you're going to do next. Major General Simmons' selection as the Joint Task Force North Commanding General is a reflection of the true quality of leadership that he exemplifies. There are very few two-star Title X tours available for National Guard general officers. This is truly a unique opportunity, and we know that Major General Simmons will excel. Today, we welcome Brigadier General Wilson. He takes command of our Georgia Army National Guard from Major General Simmons, as you just see symbolized in the passing of the colors. I served with Dwayne for many years. And like Major General Simmons, Brigadier General Wilson has demonstrated success and delivered results at every level. I know that he, Samantha, and Team Wilson will do all they can to build on the work of Major General Simmons, Yediv, and Team Simmons. Now, change is hard. I've served with Randall Simmons for more than 25 years. And so it's going to be difficult to see him and his family drive out of this gate today. I made that drive about three years ago myself, not knowing if I would ever get to come back and serve in this organization again. But I will tell you that the warrior culture embraces this kind of change, and we're excited, and we celebrate Randall's success. And we're so thankful for everything that he's done for our organization. I owe him, owe him uh, a personal debt of gratitude. I can assure you that he has coached up as much as he has coached down uh, during our time together in the last 25 plus years. So today as we see two leaders and their families answer freedom's call, I'm honored to serve with them and I'm honored to serve with all of you. May God bless you all and may God bless America. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Randall V. Simmons, Jr. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, General Cardin, Sergeant Major Marchant, Joe King, sir, thanks for being here. All previously rec recognized distinguished guests, family, friends, soldiers, airmen, and State Defense Force volunteers, thanks so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us here today. Yet of an eye along with Team Wilson are certainly honored by your presence, both personally here and online. So General Cardin, thanks uh, for the kind words. You have uh, exceeded the standard in embellishing my contributions to our organization. I can uh, assure you that the success we've enjoyed, the successes I should say we've enjoyed are the result of the men and women of our organization represented by the formation here today. We all appreciate your leadership and ability to give us guidance and uh, provide direction regardless of the circumstance. It has been a pleasure to serve with you for so long and I look forward on, to calling you in the future as a friend, mentor, and sounding board. So today is certainly uh, very surreal and, uh, and, and bittersweet. It's hard to believe that after almost 32 years uh, serving in the Georgia Guard proper, that I'll be leaving here today. Uh, it would be an understatement to say that it's with mixed emotions. I am certainly grateful and excited for the opportunities ahead of me at Joint Task Force North. I look forward to uh, getting out there in a couple of weeks and spending some time with my good friend General Neal. But at the same time, admittedly, I have feelings of trepidation and sadness, primarily because I won't have the same daily interaction with all of you. I will always cherish the personal and professional relationships we have formed over the years. Over three decades, I've seen families grow, children graduate from high school, from college, get married, have kids, and even uh, 
in some cases join our organization or another service. Through the good times and bad, this team has been very resilient and successful. It has been my greatest professional honor to serve with you for so long and culminate in this capacity. So there are really so many to think. Um, you know, I start thinking about ceremonies and how these things go. Uh, you know, my boss, he didn't give me any guidance for this ceremony, but he typically does and to, to folks. And, and if he did, I suspect it would go something like this. Hey, keep it brief. Don't go getting all nostalgic and giving a history lesson. We got to get back to work. I need everybody on this team rowing hard. So um, recognizing fully that we are uh, not rowing hard for readiness at this time, I will endeavor to keep it as brief as possible. But there are so many to thank for the support, not only to me, but to our organization, specifically uh, over the past three years. First, I have to thank God for his grace and mercy. He has always helped get through the toughest of situations and has always provided a path and the courage to follow it. And I'm truly grateful to have had this uh, tremendous opportunity. Next, I'd like to recognize members of Team Simmons that are here today and watching at home via social media. My mom and brother and others could, could not attend but are able to watch online. If it weren't for their support and always putting me in a position to be successful, today would not be possible. To my immediate, immediate family, yet of Callie and Luke, like all military families, you guys carry the heaviest loads. Yet it always makes it happen at home when I'm away, which is often. But you always manage to get it all done. From just running the household to keeping up with the kids and their many activities, I'm convinced there's no occupation more demanding than that of a military spouse. Likewise, I'm amazed by the accomplishments of Callie and Luke as they've uh, continued to grow. Both are very active and ambitious in their activities, from volleyball and soccer to Pinterest and Fortnite or whatever it is they're glued to on their devices. Um, they are both in it to win it. I'm very proud of both of you and with all, all of their support and understanding today wouldn't be possible. I love you all. So to General Cardin, sir, again, thanks for the kind words. Uh, also, uh, General Gerard, uh, Miss Susan, along with Governor's Deal and Kemp, uh, thank you for having the confidence in me and giving me the opportunity to command the very best Army National Guard in the country. You know, every generation of leadership has left our organization better than they found it. During their tenures, General Cardin and General Gerard found ways to push us to achieve perfection in hopes we could sustain excellence because just being good is not what we're about. Your leadership is responsible for our current success and I'm confident that success will continue under General Wilson's leadership. So one quick example of our organizational greatness, our excellence, is that we were selected, the Georgia Army National Guard, as the 2019-20 winner of the Army National Guard's Integrated Management System Excellence Award. That's a mouthful. Formerly known as the Army Communities of Excellence Award. You may be more familiar with that title. In fact, of the 54 states and territories that make up the National Guard of the United States, we were the only state to receive director's level recognition for this period. This is a prestigious recognition, was made possible by leaders that set the conditions for our current success um, by their previous service, as well as our current leaders for getting the job done day in and day out. We're very thankful for the uh, leadership of Colonel Retired Dent, Larry, JP, and the entire Business Transformation Office for facilitating this effort. Let's have a round of applause for this incredible accomplishment. I'd like to take a few minutes today to thank those that helped us achieve our success. Success after success. Far too many accomplishments to list and far too many individuals to name. So I'll start with probably the most important group. And those are our people, the men and women that make up the Georgia Army National Guard. From E1 to E9, W1 to W5, O1 to O8, as well as our state and federal civilian employees, you are the boldest, most innovative, courageous, and disciplined force we have ever seen. Because of you, we have been able to contribute to the war fight in faraway lands while simultaneously helping our countrymen here at home in the wake of natural disasters, a global pandemic, and other domestic response operations. Make no mistake, you are what makes our formation strong, and you are what will 
will make it better in the days, weeks, months, and years ahead. I am as certain that our best days are ahead of us as I am that our most challenging ones are as well. That's why I encourage you, and I know you will, continue to be the best, most ready, most lethal, and most adaptable force you can be. Our country will need you. So our accomplishments would not be possible without exceptional leadership at all levels. We have great company, troop, battery commanders, and first sergeants, superior battalion commanders and command sergeants major, and simply amazing brigade level commanders and CSM. Likewise, our state staff has been a key enabler for our units in the field. I've been fortunate to have two, I've had two great chiefs of staff during my tenure, then Colonel Wilson and now Colonel Poole. They have done an excellent job guiding our staff to focus on our organizational priorities. It is because of all of your combined efforts we were able to accomplish so much over the past three years. So just to put it into perspective, it's been a busy three years. 13 deployments, 13 combat deployments we've supported. 18 overseas deployment training rotations or com combat training center rotations. Look at domestic operations, what we've done here at home in 2018, one hurricane, 2019, two hurricanes, and 2020. I'm not even gonna mention 2020 because I don't wanna jinx 2021. But everybody knows we've been quite busy. You know, these operational highlights are certainly the result of our professional force. But we've had many partners that have played key roles in our mutual successes. You know, I certainly appreciate the partnership of our brothers and sisters in the Georgia Air National Guard, the General Grabowski, Command Chief Master Sergeant Washington. Thanks for everything that you do. Thanks for your leadership and, uh, and support. Thanks for always making me look good, Gasket. Um, your, uh, your team, though, is second to none and uh, your contributions to our joint task force over the past year cannot be overstated. I uh, will certainly uh, you're always uh, engaged and always looking for a way to make a difference. It's uh, certainly been an honor to serve with you. To Manny, uh, General Hadopoulos, thanks for all you do. Uh, Deuce, Colonel Crumley, uh, Colonel Promotable Crumley, congratulations on your se selection to be your next director of the joint staff and your pending promotion. The wing commanders, Jags and Amy, just uh, uh, glad to be associated with you and appreciate all that you guys have done. To our teammates across the ramp, Colonel McPike and the 94th Airlift Wing and all of Team Dobbins, thanks for your continued partnership and all that you do. The General Blackstock uh, and the Georgia State Defense Force, I tell you, the, the people of the state of Georgia certainly owe this organization a huge debt of gratitude uh, for all they have done in the wake of our uh, COVID-19 and uh, response. Your team's selfless efforts during these unprecedented times is an example for all to follow. Other teammates like Major General Tony Agudo in the 3rd Infantry Division had enabled total Army partnership, total Army success, and set the standard for total force partnership, and I am confident, to, confident the foundation for future success with the mighty Marin Division, the 48th Infantry Brigade Combat Team, the 648th Maneuver Enhancement Brigade, and our Marin Detachment our sound. Thank you for your efforts to increase our readiness and lethality. We also enjoy great relationships with Fort Benning and Fort Gordon, amazing partners there as well. In addition to these military partnerships, we've enjoyed working with many state and federal interagency partners. The Georgia Emergency Management Agency, Georgia State Patrol, Departments of Public Health, Transportation, Natural Resources, Agriculture, the GBI, and never in my wildest dreams would I ever think we work so closely with all of these agencies. The governor's staff, um, they have all just been laser focused on protecting our state and local communities. It's been a pleasure to work with these uh, men and women and these agencies during such a trying time in our history to keep our state as safe as possible. So over the last nine months, we found ourselves in a unique position to partner with Augusta University to assist the Department of Public Health with COVID-19 testing. From Dr. Keel to Russell, to Katrina, Dr. Cool, Jennifer Mallory, and many others, I found them to be one of the most impressive groups I've ever worked with. I thought we were aggressive, but we really had to up our game to keep up with them. Thanks for your partnership and all you have done during this public health crisis. Now, speaking of school spark partnerships, uh, General Cardin alluded to it earlier, we enjoy great uh, relationships with all colleges, universities, and technical schools in the state of Georgia. But specifically the ROTC programs at the University of North Georgia, 
and Georgia Military College, and certainly my home school, Georgia Southern, um, continue to support um, our readiness objectives by sending us quality lieutenants. These schools have superior programs catered to our service members and veterans. So special thanks to Dr. Jacobs and um, UNG. Ma'am, thanks for being here. Dr. Marrero at Georgia Southern, sir, thanks for joining us online. And General Caldwell, sir, thanks for uh, being here and all that you do. We appreciate all of your support and leadership at your institution. We've also enjoyed superior community support from many. These community leaders and patriots give their time and energy to support our service members and, their, and our families. Most notably, their, their efforts raise money, raise funding for our Family Support Foundation. As General Card mentioned, I've had the pleasure of serving as the president of our foundation over the past three years and certainly appreciate the community support. Now, we all know that Harriet Morgan is the real leader of the foundation. Um, her passion and dedication has and will continue to help our service members and their families for years to come. So to Harriet, Nancy, Leslie, Sharon, Christine, Claire, Cassie, Pam, Andrea, Eden and David, Christy, John, American Legion, Post 29, Tom and Walt, and many more, thanks for everything that you do for our servicemen and women and our veteran community. So I know we have some of our CASAs here today and joining us online, uh, James Balcom, John Hargrove, my friend, uh, John Phillips, sir, thanks for being here, fellow Red Leg Hua. Um, Lieutenant General Retired Ken Keene and Bill Carp Cathcart, thanks for all you do for our soldiers, our Army, and our country. Now, I've also had an awesome personal staff to keep me on track the past three years. XOs like FMC, y'all might know her as Field Marshal Cherry, Colonel Cherry, Lieutenant Colonels Fairfax and Powell, Aides Captains Loki and Burgess, and the infamous Captain Dablemont the one and only Rev Carver, remarkable professionals like Larkin Reese, Staff Sergeant Garrison, Sergeant Garcia, and uh, Major the Professor Carraway. You have all played a key role in our success. I'm certainly very thankful for having had the opportunity to serve with you and appreciate all that you've done for me personally. I've also had the high honor to serve with our state Command Chief Warrant Officer, CW5 Carl Jackson and watch him as he has grown our Warrant Officer Corps to our highest levels in strength and readiness. Chief, thanks for all you do, and as always, your motto, uh, my motto for you, CCWO for life. I'm too valuable to let go. The support we've received from the TAG's office has been exceptional. I certainly will miss seeing all of you. Mr. Ferrero, Lieutenant Colonel Freeman, Command Sergeant Major Marchant, Maria and Laney, thank you for what you do for our organization. And also, thanks for the many treats you let me indulge in from time to time. Um, lastly, I've also been blessed to have great battle buddies in the form of State Command Sergeant Major. From CSM Stringfield to Lewis and now Sergeant Major Logan, they represent the backbone of our profession and do and have done a tremendous job leading our formation. Command Sergeant Major Logan, thanks so much for everything. I will forever be in your debt for your service to our organization, for your mentorship, and for your counsel. Thank you. To close, as I leave here today and say goodbye, I'm even more excited for the future for, uh, as General Wilson assumes command. Duane, best of luck in the future. Thanks for your many years as a colleague, friend, and mentor. I truly wish you and Samantha the best as you take the Georgia Army National Guard to new heights. Finally, special thanks for uh, everyone responsible for putting on today's ceremony. It can't be overstated. Uh, uh, you've so simply done an exceptional job honoring our organization. The 116th Army Band, as always, you guys rock. Your presence at every ceremony just makes it even more special. Thank you. Um, to the Salute Battery, my people from the 118th, thank you for all that you do. All those uh, cannon shots out, out there, I thought they were Georgia Southern touchdowns. Who? Um, <laughs> who? The, the, for uh, First Sergeant Singleton, thank you for all you do, your service. And, uh, man, what a great rendition of the national anthem. Never gets old. Um, Chaplain Davis, thanks for your spiritual leadership and today's invocation. You know, and I'll just leave you with one final thought. You know, if my service in this position has done nothing else, I hope it inspires others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more. Because I tell you, in this organization, anything can, is possible. If I can do it, so can you. There's probably a young soldier out there somewhere considering getting out. And I would say, don't do that. 
stay the course and just never quit and you will accomplish unimaginable goals. Thank you again for coming today or watching online. God bless our soldiers and our families, especially those forward deployed. And God bless America. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commanding General of the Georgia Army National Guard, Brigadier General Richard D. Wilson. Hey, well, good afternoon, the, or good morning. The, uh, that's definitely a, a hard act to follow there, but, but Major General Cardin, Lieutenant General Retired Cardwell, or Caldwell, Major General Gerard, who I believe is uh, watching virtually, Major General King, Mr. Ferrero, Brigadier General Grabowski, Colonel McPike, Brigadier General Retired McCullough, other general officers, CW5, Carl Jackson, our Command Chief Warrant Officer, hashtag Command Chief for Life, Command Sergeant Major Marchant, previously recognized, distinguished guests, friends, family, and especially the soldiers, airmen, and State Defense Force volunteers of this organization. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedules to attend today's ceremony. To the soldiers of the finest formation in the Army, the Patriots of the Army National Guard, the Georgia Army National Guard, either present here this morning or watching virtually, I couldn't be more excited and honored to once again take my place among your ranks. And I sincerely appreciate your service and your sacrifice and your families to our state and nation. To the 116th Band and First Sergeant Singleton, as always, you sound outstanding. Great job with the national anthem. We certainly appreciate your support today, here's, uh, here today as well. Chaplain Davis, thanks for the invocation. We're thankful to have you in the organization. You and your team do a superb job of taking care of our families and our soldiers. I too would like to thank God for this day, for the opportunity, as well as the blessings that he provides daily to each of us and our families. I want to especially thank Major General Randall Simmons and Yetta for welcoming Samantha and I back into the Georgia Army National Guard formation. I sincerely appreciate the seamless transition over the last few weeks. I've had the privilege of working with uh, Randall as both his chief of staff and more recently partnering with him as the director of the joint staff. And I can't think of a more qualified officer to lead Army North Joint Task Force North. Thanks for your leadership, your mentorship, and your friendship through the years. Congratulations again to both you and Yetif. Best of luck and Godspeed as you transition to your new, new assignment in Texas. And finally, a very special thanks to my own family. My wife, Samantha, has been by my side since the beginning of our career. Sam, thanks so much for your unconditional love, your support, and your commitment to what we do. There's no doubt in my mind that I wouldn't be standing here today if not for you and your sacrifice uh, as an Army spouse. Uh, to the rest of Team Wilson, some, some here and some watching virtually. Uh, so Nate, my oldest son, and his wife, Jenna, Hannah, my oldest daughter, uh, and her husband, my son-in-law, Brett, Noah, and his wife, Sydney, and then our youngest daughter, Sarah Grace, uh, who keeps me grounded. Uh, you guys have been incredibly flexible and resilient throughout my career. Thanks for your continued love, your understanding, and your patience. You know, both of my sons, Nate and Noah, and also my son-in-law, Brett, also serve in our profession. So I want to thank them and their families for what they do as well. General Cardin, thank you, and Governor Kemp. Uh, for this incredible opportunity to continue to serve our state and our nation. I'm both humbled and honored to assume the position of the Assistant Adjutant General and the Commander of the Georgia Army National Guard. As a leader, there's no greater responsibility than to be entrusted with the care of our greatest national treasure, the sons and daughters of this great country. It's a responsibility that I'm fully committed to. I sincerely appreciate your confidence and your continued support. You know, we're serving at a very his historic and challenging time. Our forces have been continually engaged in supporting combat operations, security and deter deterrence missions, as well as honing our warfighting skills during training opportunities around the globe. Iraq, Afghanistan, Kosovo, Germany, the country of Georgia, and here in the U.S. along our own southwest border are just a few of the places that our soldiers courageously serve on a daily basis. Additionally, over the last eight or nine months, we've been committed to providing assistance to our own citizens right here at home during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
mobile disinfection and testing teams, focusing their efforts on our most vulnerable populations, augmenting both regional and metro Atlanta area food bank operations, and providing support to our state law enforcement agencies in an effort to protect First Amendment rights for Georgians are just a few of the missions that our soldiers have successfully executed. I don't think there's ever been a time in my career that I've been more proud of the hard work and dedication of all of our formations. Daily, I witness soldiers and leaders of all ranks demonstrate an unprecedented amount of agility, discipline, and professionalism. The Georgia Army National Guard continues to prove that it's no stranger to successfully facing challenges. Our soldiers overcome, overcome each of them with both determination and strength. And this strength doesn't come from fiscal resources, modern equipment, or advances in technology. It's a strength that's characterized by competence, commitment, character, and diversity. And it's found in each of the soldiers, NCOs, and officers that are represented here this morning. I don't think that anyone would disagree that our environment will undoubtedly remain complex and uncertain. I have no doubt that much will continue to be required of us in the days, in the days ahead. However, I also know that this organization is certainly up to the task. Command Sergeant Major Logan and I, as well as the entire Patriot staff, are committed to our two most important priorities, taking care of our soldiers and our families and ensuring that our formations remain as ready as possible to deploy, fight, and win our nation's wars when required. I look forward to serving with each and every one of you. Together, we'll ensure that the Georgia Army National Guard remains ready, lethal, resilient, and relevant. Sir, thanks again for this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I am truly honored to be part of this team. Patriots. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the singing of the Army song. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Major General Simmons and Brigadier General Wilson will receive guests here in Hangar 5 to the left of the reviewing stand. To those who have joined us online, thank you for watching. And for those who are present today, thank you for attending. Have a wonderful day.
chaos and confusion because they, I think they know this. I think they know on election night, President Trump's going to win. They know on election day, the vote count on election day, President Trump's going to win. And they want to keep counting. Six weeks, four weeks, Iowa caucus, whenever. They, I don't know when they decided that one. I still don't know if they've declared a winner. I don't know if it was Bernie or Biden or whoever was running then. That's what they want. And they're willing to go after a guy like you who has served our country, served his community, helps kids with their education, amazing record in business. They're willing to go after you. And you've been on the job 70 days. And everything you've testified is nothing new that's been done by the same thing's been done by other postmaster generals. And yet they're coming after you because that's how much they want to get this president. It's disgusting. And we all know what's going on. And you're, the fact that you won't, you know it too, you won't say it. I think that shows your, your character as well. But I'll say it because it's the truth. And the American people understand it and see right through it. I yield back. The gentleman uh, back up, Congressman Krishna Warthi. You're now recognized. Good morning, Mr. DeJoy. Good morning. Before becoming Postmaster General, I believe you appropriately resigned from being the finance chair for the Republican National Convention, correct? I did, sir. And I, I say you appropriately got a $10 billion line of credit. Is that right? Yes, sir. You, and, and changing out the sorting machines and removing and changing out mail collection boxes is nothing different than has happened before. Right, every, every postmaster general, every, every, every year we do those sort of things. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so there's no, no different. In fact, what was the number? I think between 2011 and 2016, it was like 12,000 mail collection boxes that were removed, changed out by the Obama-Biden administration. Is that right? It was a lot. I don't know. Yeah, it was a lot. And you didn't order a reduction in overtime or reduction in hours. I think you testified that earlier. I did not. So why are, they, why, why, why are these guys out to get you? What is it? I don't, I don't, uh, they have their own concerns. I assume they're legitimate with them. And, well, you uh, assume, you assume they're legitimate? Why, why are they out to get you? I mean, Mr. DeJoy, they, they've had people protesting at your house last night. They've been doing it for weeks. Ninety, some of these people have already called for you to, to resign. They, have, they passed the bill before they even talked to you, before they even had a hearing. They're not interested in a bipartisan solution, as evidenced by the fact the chairwoman wouldn't even contact the White House chief of staff, who had a bill that he worked on with the previous chairman, the late Chairman Cummings, a bipartisan bill to address concerns at the post office. So I'm asking you, why are they after you? you, were, uh, you first of all, you were, you, were, uh, you were appointed by the Board of Governors, right? I was appointed by a unanimous appointment by a bipartisan unanimous, Board of Governors. Unanimous vote, bipartisan, not all Republicans. Democrats thought you were the right guy for the job, right? Yes, sir. So why are they out to get you? I, uh, I, I have no, no idea. I do have a lot of support out there amongst employees and people in America, though. I receive it every day. You've got an amazing record in business. You've got an amazing history of community service. You help kids with their education.